Hey everyone, so I wanted to do a quick little video uh, going over graphing uh, as far as how it's related to the EP. Now the first half of this, it's going to kind of be a recap of some of the stuff that you already know, but the later half is going to be, uh, it should be something new uh, that you haven't seen in physics yet, or in class. Um, so as you all know that we have different uh, uses for graphs. They can organize data. Um, they can show trends, they can show um, relationships, uh, and they can tell stories, things like that. So uh, something from here, if you look at this uh, graph, this graph is representing um, my daily mileage while I was uh, driving from uh, about 2008 to about 2014. Um, and while for the most part it looks kind of random from your point of view, if I look at this data and try to analyze it and compare it to what I know about my life, there are things that I can tell. For example, these patches where there ends up being spikes compared to these low times, these, when I compare it to you know, what was going on at that time, that's when I was working, uh, when I was going to college and working part time somewhere else. Uh, so that kind of uh, is part of my whole commuting. Uh, over here, we can actually see the same type of relationship we saw right here, but shifted up about 50 uh, miles. Uh, this is around the time I dated a girl who didn't drive, and that 50 miles happens to be the round trip back and forth. So uh, graphs have a very strong uh, purpose in science. They have so many uses uh, that it's not even funny. So. One of the things that you should have learned in previous classes uh, is that you have uh, two different variables, a dependent and independent variable. The independent variable is what you um, are manipulating, uh, and that's usually put on the x-axis. This could be things like number of trials, time, all that good stuff. Uh, the dependent is something that's going to be on the y-axis. It's what you're actually measuring based off of the independent variable. Um, and typically, the dependent is going to be on the y, independent is going to be on the x. Now, one thing I do want to point out is that um, unlike some of the other science classes where the goal of the graph is just to see a trend and then that's it, like you can look at the graph and that's how you uh, pull information from it. In physics, we get information from doing things like taking the slope, taking the area, uh, finding um, a line that fits it. So when we make a graph, we don't always follow the dependent independent variable uh, process. We usually put values on the y and x axis in order to make sure that the variable that we can get from the slope or from the area is what we want. So just keep that in mind that you don't always have to follow the dependent independent variable. There's going to be about maybe 25% of the time where it doesn't follow that. And, and you'll see why. So don't, you know, freak out about that. Uh, other things that you need to, in your in your graph, you have to have, you know, labels on the on the axes. You need to make sure that you put a scale. Uh, be careful. You can't skip uh, steps. Uh, so if you start at zero, uh, you have to kind of go up by an equal amount each time. So if you go up, if one of the blocks goes up by two, all the blocks go up by two. Uh, there's no breaking of the line. There's no kind of like zooming in on the graph. You always have to start at zero and go up at a consistent scale. Uh, and then you want to make sure that you draw a line of best fit. Uh, this says if asked, but it's almost guaranteed you're doing a line or a curve of best fit. Now, some of the things that you should be able to do for graphs is understand the relationship uh, between variables. For example, if you have a linear graph like this, we can see that the relationship between uh, the, y, the y variable and the x variable is a linear relationship, the y equals mx. So this is a linear relationship. If we instead had an exponential relationship between these two, that would mean that the relationship between y and x is given like this, y equals x squared. In fact, one thing we can actually do is write this as y being proportional to x squared. Because for the most part, all the other stuff, the a, even the plus bx plus c that usually comes after the uh, parabola, doesn't matter. What matters is this uh, straight relationship. 
or an inverse decay graph uh, would show this type of relationship between the y and x variable. Um, and then whatever exponent, like this could actually be a, an exponent of 2, an exponent of 3, whatever. Same thing, you know, we say that this has a y and x has this type of inverse or inverse square relationship. Uh, all this actually becomes important in the next part. So one of the things that you're going to end up finding is that they're going to give you, uh, they could end up giving you a scenario or you might be graphing a scenario where the two variables do not have a linear relationship. Now if you're using a computer, this actually isn't that, a pro uh, that big of a problem. There are tons of programs that allow you to do a, uh, a parabolic, an exponential, or an inverse uh, equation fitting onto that graph. But when it comes time for the test, they're gonna you won't have access to that computer. So you'll have to be able to do this on on paper. And for the most part, that's a complex setup. Uh, it's actually really hard to do a uh, form fitting of a curve. So in order to actually analyze the graphs, and like I said, in this class, analyzing is taking slopes, getting the equation of the line or the curve that goes through the points. Uh, the best and easiest way is to look at a linear graph. You know, we can all easily get a slope and get the y-intercept for a linear graph. So you might have to find that you take this relationship that is typically exponential and you'll have to linearize it. So a good example is this. If they give you energy versus velocity and you graphed it, you would find a somewhat of a curved relationship, an exponential relationship between the two. Uh, and it does turn out that the energy and the velocity have a squared exponential relationship. So how do we linear, linearize this? There are two ways. Uh, the most common way and the way that you're probably going to do it is to look at the reference table to find the relationship. If it's not in the reference table, they should have told you what the relationship is. And this has happened before where they throw out a random equation and they ask you to linearize it and that equation is not on the reference table, but you know you still kind of do it the same way. So for example in here, uh, if we look on the uh, reference table for an equation that relates energy and speed, we get this equation, k equals one half mv squared. Uh, the v squared tells me that's an exponential relationship. Uh, based off of this, you know, because of the fact that the equation of a line is y equals mx plus b, if I put the kinetic energy on the y-axis and the v squared on the x-axis, I'll end up getting a linear relationship. And again, you can test this out on a uh, computer uh, program like Excel, and you will find that the uh, equation does end up fitting a linear graph. Uh, now what's important about this is that from here, now that I can come up with the equation of our line, I can find the slope, which is extremely easy to do, and now, based off of my equation, the slope gives me one half m. So from here, using the slope, I can get it more information that I need. In this case, mass. So this is what you would normally do. You would linearize it based off of the equation. If anything's squared, you square it on in the data table and put that in the graph. Uh, square rooted, whatever. And then whatever is left over, that ends up being equal to your slope. Uh, you'll see a bunch of more examples of this later on, don't worry about that. And I'll walk you through other examples. Um, now the other thing that you could do, this is more something that you would see in college. Uh, this is uh, for the cases when you actually don't know the relationship or if you're trying to verify or get the relationship, uh, is you could do what's called a log-log plot. And this basically means that you take the log of both sides, uh, or you take the log of both variables, uh, and then what you end up getting is you still get a linear graph, but now the slope of the line actually tells you the square, or whatever the exponent is on that variable. So if you have a relationship like this, y being proportional to x squared, the slope will end up being 2. This is because, if you recall the rules for logs, log of y, log of x squared, oh, I guess I can't write over there. When you have a square 
on a variable that's being uh, multiplied or uh, using the log function, that exponent goes into the front. So the slope of my new variable ends up being the exponent that would have been there without the log. Uh, and then in addition, here, unlike the other setup, uh, the y-intercept actually does serve a big purpose. Now it's going to be equal to the log of all the other terms. So again, if this was the same equation uh, of energy equals one-half mv squared, my y-intercept would be equal to uh, the log of half m. So I could use my rules of logs in order to figure, uh, whoop, that should be y intercept. Um, I could use the rule of logs and how to solve it, you know, basic algebra to figure out what my mass is. So again, I can come up with the equation from this. It's a little bit more complicated, and again, you're more li most likely not going to see this. Uh, I might have a few questions here and there where you do this, but uh, you shouldn't be expecting to do this on a test. Uh, another thing that you might see is something called correlation. Uh, correlation is something that we do when, whenever we put a line through a curve of uh, data, and it basically shows how well the points lay on the line. It ranges between negative 1 to positive 1, with negative 1 and positive 1 being really close on the line, and 0 being no correlation at all. So these graphs represent a, a relationship between, you know, what the correlation would be if this was a positive, like this would be something that's very close to positive 1. This would be, you know, this could be plus 0.5. This would be negative 1, you know, same, and then this would be the one where r equals 0. So obviously the next question is, what does this mean for the AP? Um, so like I said, uh, you're going to need to know how to um, you know the relationships. You need to know how to do the linearizing. Um, this becomes extremely important for designing an experiment. As I mentioned, you're guaranteed to have uh, a design your own experiment type question on the AP and throughout the tests in this class and homework assignments. Uh, and in these experiments, you're pretty much guaranteed to have to come up with a way of doing graphing in the analysis. There are very few cases where the gra where you wouldn't be able to do a graph. But for the most part, they want you to find a way to incorporate that graph. Uh, and like I said, it gives much more accurate information. Um, like, I, uh, like I said, you might have to do a linearizing the graph. Uh, the best way that they kind of hint at this, uh, they don't actually explicitly say that phrasing. Uh, but one way that they'll uh, kind of hint at it is they'll give you a data table with one missing uh, piece. That's usually a way for them to say that they want you to take this information and manipulate it in some way into here. So, for example, going back to the kinetic energy equation, because k was proportional to v squared, I could have made this column into velocity squared and then squared all the velocities they would have wanted you to write this in. Or uh, another thing you could have seen is uh, you wouldn't really do this, but uh, it turns out that the square root of k is also proportional to v. So you could have also chosen to do the square root of k. And again, you take these numbers and square root them and you get your, um, your values. Uh, so that's what they would want you to do when you want when they uh, are expecting to, you to linearize the graph. Um, now another thing that you should uh, that I, sh I should point out is that uh, the AP loves to ask questions where the graphs aren't straight lines. They always want to kind of have graphs that kind of resemble what you would get in a, uh, a lab setup in an experiment. So let's say we had uh, this type of graph. Now, if I asked you to find the area of this graph, you may not be able to figure it out right away because, you know, this this section right here kind of almost looks a little curved and it, it's a little bit wonky. But if you instead just did little segments of straight lines that kind of represent, you know, what's going on, then you can easily find the area under this graph. You have a very clear and distinct triangle here and a very clear 
square rectangle over here. All right. So that's the other thing that you're kind of expected to do is do a, a little like quick uh, line through these points, lines of best fits. Uh, unlike the labs that you see uh, that you'll end up doing in class, you shouldn't be seeing a lot of uh, graphs that have uh, jumps like that, where it's linear, then it's flat, and then it jumps down. Uh, there are a few cases where, where that happens, but I don't predict it happening in uh, the lab, but they, you will see it a lot more frequently in, uh, the, te in the test. So um, just be aware that my comment in lab of you can only have a single straight line of uh, best fit doesn't apply to these questions. Um, like I said, uh, kind of goes with what I said before about you, you should really know what the relationship should look like between any two variables. You know, if you graph, uh, you know, X and Y, what is it going to look like? Um, and like I said, this kind of relates through uh, with the whole being able to linearize the, the graph. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Like I said, some of the stuff that I mentioned in the beginning should have been a little bit of recap about graphs, but it's this later part of um, linearizing data that I really want to make sure I hit. All right, if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, see you later. Good luck and have a great day.